As we begin to sing this song, I want everybody to worship. And the great thing is you worship the way you want to worship. Hallelujah. There's a freedom. There's a liberty in the house this morning. I believe it and I feel it in this place. So can we all, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And let's open this place up. Let's open this service with some praise and worship. In Jesus' name.
victory be all my praise. I'm gonna dance my troubles away. I'm gonna dance, shout unto the Lord. I'm gonna praise my Jesus like never before. I know there's victory beyond my praise. I'm gonna dance my troubles away. I'm gonna dance, shout unto the Lord. this morning what's it worth to you what is salvation worth to you what is his presence worth to you in this place what is God worth to you in your life I want to ask you what you bring to give him this morning did you tithe on your praise this morning did you tithe on your talent this morning did you tithe on your treasure this morning church I want to ask you again what is it worth to you what is it worth to you to have him show up in your life and do miracles, to do exploits, to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we should ask or think? What's it worth to you today in this house, church? I'm not going to go through it, but we have many ways to give in this place. We're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into the prayer. And Sister Amanda, I would just ask that you do that song again whenever we get done praying. Because we're going to tithe on our time, our talent, and our treasure in this place today. Come on, somebody give me an amen on that. So upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings, and I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, and the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. And you pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received, and my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I want to ask you to come and give at this time. There is something that everybody can be thankful for. Give as the Lord has laid it on you to show your appreciation for what he's done for you. I'm going to dance, dance, dance all over this house. I'm going to praise my Jesus till the walls come down. I know there's victory beyond my praise. I'm going to dance my troubles away. I'm going to dance, dance, dance all over this house. I'm going to praise my Jesus till the walls come down. I know there's victory beyond my praise. I'm going to dance my troubles away. Wait till my troubles are over. Oh, 
Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. How many of you feel him in the house this morning? This feels good. I don't know about you, but this feels good. Hallelujah. I think the story about Paul and Silas, they were in the inner prison, the Bible says, and they said at midnight, they begin to sing praises and lift up praises to the Lord. And he said a great earthquake and set them free. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you're facing, but you need to praise him this morning. I said you need to praise him this morning while you've got an opportunity. I said he can set you free when we lift him up and we begin to praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, your will be done. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have a need in the house this morning, I don't know what it is, but he does. So just make it known by the raising of your hand. Let's go to him in prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you this morning. God, we bring these needs before you, Lord. We place them at your feet, God. We release faith in this house this morning, God. Knowing that you're a healer, knowing that you're a deliverer, God. You've proven it time and time again, God. We trust you, Lord, and we magnify you, Lord, that it shall be done, God. Your word said it. Your word said it, God, and we believe it, God. We release faith in Jesus' name this morning, God, to meet all these needs, God, these miracles, God, that we need, Lord. We come to you, Lord, and we lift you up. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise in our house this morning.
Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. If you're able, would stand and honor the word of the Lord. Today will be a day 
that will live. You and I decide if it is, as President Roosevelt said, a day that will live in infamy or a day that will define me. I feel an urgency in my spirit that there be a time of division this morning where the Lord will divide the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats. Thank you for coming today. It's an incredible congregation that's here. Somewhere between now and whenever. Get your mind fixed on Jesus. Let us therefore come boldly. Now we have an idea of what boldly means, but it's not the right idea. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. I tell you, there's just one throne of grace. There's a lot of thrones of judgment. There's a lot of thrones of power. There's only one throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I want to preach to you for a few minutes. Brand new message. Never preached it before. First, I want to say what a move of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't sit back there one more service wishing you could be a part of what's going on up here. Just come on. You say, ah, it's not that far from where I'm sitting to where that is. Let me tell you something. For some of us, it's eternity. A petition that won't be forgotten. A petition that won't be forgotten. If you could today, write down the perfect conclusion to this service as far as you're concerned. What would God do for you? If you wrote it down, a petition that won't be forgotten. Pray with me for a moment. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you moved in this place. There's a, there is a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost that is taking place in this room, even now as we speak, Lord. Praise team did an incredible job leading us into the presence of the Lord, and our team did a wonderful job setting the stage. But now it's coming to us, God, and uh, healing is the desire. Holiness is the desire. Help is the desire. Faith is the desire. Whatever we need, whatever we need, let, let our needs come to the surface right now. Maybe it's been buried for a long time, but there's something missing. There's something lacking. There's something that we're searching for, we're looking for, Lord. And if we wrote it down, the perfect need, the perfect solution, conclusion to this service, what would it be? For each of us, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Please be seated. A petition that won't be forgotten. Let us therefore come boldly. Boldly would give the impression perhaps if one walked to the front of this room boldly, it would be with head up and shoulders back and perhaps a, a little bit of a, an arrogance that's, that's maybe not bad, may, maybe not bad. I, I'm, not, I'm not throwing rocks at it, but we would have an idea of what boldly, what to come boldly to the throne of grace might mean. The word boldly defined in the original Greek says freedom or openness or confidence 
But then it has a definition that shook me to the very core of my being, uh, that, that shook me away from the very, uh, in some manner, the roots of my heritage uh, as I realized uh, that there is a boldness uh, that is presented to me by Scripture that I have fallen short of. Uh, but the word boldness means uh, leaving a witness uh, that something deserves to be remembered. Uh, it is an idea that says... Uh, when I come into the throne room, I come seriously. This is not frivolously. This is not lightly. This is not half-heartedly. But I entered into the throne room of grace, and I've got a need in my body, and I've got a need in my mind, and I've got a need in my home, and I've got a made-up mind that says, if I ever came with purpose, it must be now. It is a attitude that leaves a witness that my need, my spirit, my present state will be remembered. It's going beyond, and I mean no offense. If I'm offensive this morning, just consider it the Holy Ghost moving in your life. It's going beyond a generic approach such as one might offer simply because something's being given out. I've noticed something going on with the food banks in our community and in the surrounding communities. There's so much food being brought, they can't give it all away. So people just show up and say, well, I guess since you're giving something away, I'll take some. That attitude is coming to the house of God and the Spirit came today and said, get rid of it. There ain't nobody here generically. There's nobody here just because it's cool. There's nobody here just because we're going through the motions. But there's some men and there's some women and there's some children in this room that came to the throne of grace because they need something from God. I'm talking about a deliverance from a selective response. I'm talking about a deliverance from a preference-based relationship with God. But somebody that just shows up and says, my need is bigger than my preference. My desire is bigger than my likes or my dislikes. My desire is bigger than whatever sin you might still be dealing with. Let me tell you something. This ain't no line that you get in just cause something's being given away. This is a specific, precious, special, unique relationship that is afforded to every human being in the world. And we don't come into the presence of the Lord and just get some spillover. And we don't come into the presence of the Lord and just get, you know, just get a little bit of gold with the flow. But you are here today because you need him. You are here today because you need him. And I come today to take the curtain off of your facade and allow your need to come to the surface. And as blind Barnabas said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. You remember I'm coming. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. You just will get on board, baby. And if you don't want the Lord to rattle your cage, you might ought to head for the hills or go to the buffet and beat everybody else. But there's something being loosed in this house right now. There's something being loosed that says I can come boldly and today's a different day. I'm going to come into the presence of the Lord and I'm giving birth to a testimony. I'm giving birth to a revelation. I'm giving birth to an answer to my prayer. Nobody's going to forget today. Nobody's going to forget what happens today, especially me. I don't come with my shoulders thrown back or my head in the air. I come with a purpose. I come with a consecrated a desire in my heart and in my spirit that says enough is enough. I'm not backing down. I'm not going to the right or to the left. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it for the long haul. Oh, we need to worship the Lord right now. If you've got your mind made up, if you've got your mind, if you're sold out to the kingdom, you need to worship the Lord. 
Please be seated. I'm not coming haughty. Remember, I'm coming because I've got a need. I'm cold. I'm lukewarm. How long has it been since you showed up into the presence of the Lord with a backpack on that says, I'm not going to leave here till I get what I came for? How long has it been since you showed up to the table hungry? I'm not haughty. I'm not arrogant. I'm in need. It's not a reflection of my financial or social standing. It's not a reflection of what you might think of me or anybody else might think of me. I come to you because I'm at the end of my rope. I come today because I'm all out of answers. I'm weak and I'm worn out. I don't have much to offer, yet I come. Yet I come. And as the writer affirms, I come boldly. Perhaps he katas and I come in a way I've never come before. I don't come with an obligatory tear or maybe one hand up or three or four little patty cakes. But I come with my hands thrown in the air and my head lifted back and my heart ripped wide open and say, God, I need thee. I come with a passion. I come with a longing. I come with a hunger. No more lies. No more fake. No more facade. No more mask. I come because enough is enough. I come prepared to leave a witness that my petition deserves to be remembered. And if I don't get an answer today, if you allow me to say it this way, when the Lord climbs out of bed in the morning, he's going to tumble over my memorial. Say, I don't know about that. Oh, I do know about that. There was a certain woman, and there was an unjust steward. And she came, and she said, I mean, the Holy Ghost is here. She said, avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me of mine adversary. And he said, you know what? And this is Jesus talking about prayer. This is Jesus talking about prayer. The, uh, the uh, unjust steward, he said, or, or the messed up judge, he said, let me tell you something. I don't fear God, and I don't regard man. Ain't nobody does anything that makes me do anything I I don't want to do. He said, but this lady just won't stop. I don't know that you're hearing the word right now. This lady just ain't going to stop. This is the Lord talking about prayer. You see, the first one that went to the house at midnight, he was after something. But the woman that came to the unjust judge, something was after her. Well, I don't know who you are. I don't know everybody in here, thank God. But I will before the service is over with if you don't burn out of here too fast. But I want you to know something. Hell wants you. The devil is after you. He wants to stop you, derail you, kill, steal, and destroy you. But there's a power that died for you, that shed his blood for you, that says the devil can't have you. unless you quit. He said, I'm going to take care of what this woman wants because she won't stop. What happens in this throne room today will be a part of who I am forever. I come with the passion and the purpose of Cornelius who gave and prayed a memorial into heaven where the Lord had no, op no choice but to acknowledge him. Oh. <laughs> Come on, he was going to walk by Bartimaeus, folks. He was going to walk by Bartimaeus until Bartimaeus hollered the second time. And he got a little louder. Say, oh, is, is he that kind of God? No, he just wants to know how bad you really need him. How bad do you really need him? That we may, we come into this throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. Everybody say to help. 
Listen, the days of you coming to find your head padded and your bottom powdered are over. The Lord didn't come to just make you comfortable in your mess. He came to help you. We're not coming for Band-Aids and we're not coming for Tylenol and we're not coming for head and shoulders. We're coming to be changed. We're coming to be helped. We're coming to be healed. Because you see, what I'm bringing, this is not derogatory. What I'm bringing, don't nobody else know nothing about. Oh, Brother Larry, if that was true, if that was true, I wouldn't even got to preach today. If we acknowledged it, what I'm bringing, the hell I'm fighting, and the devil that's after me, you don't know nothing about it. Uh, let me tell you something. The Lord didn't come to play games with nobody today. The Lord didn't come keep, to keep uh, consoling you in your crisis that you've claimed as your identity. Aren't you tired of just feeling better for a day or two? <laughs> he says, I come, obtain mercy, and find grace to help in the time of need. Now that time of need, well, here, I need $20. No, you don't. I need a Big Mac. No, you don't. I need a new bedspread. No, you don't. I need a new car. No, you don't. Your need goes way beyond the superficial. Say, well, I, I don't know who he thinks he's talking to. I'm talking about half the church. The half that somehow or the other missed out on what we just experienced. Say, oh, now you're being ugly. And you, no, I'm not. I'm telling you, if you start reaching after God based upon your need, this church will not be able to hold the praise that gets lifted up. Because you see, this word in time of need is not need a new dress for Easter. No, you, no matter of fact, you never have needed one. It is a critical assistance that meets an urgent situation. That's what the need is they're talking about. Critical assistance that meets an urgent situation. Critical assistance. You know what critical assistance is? The one that if you don't get, somebody dies. The one that you don't get, somebody's lost. See, that's what I come for. Say, well, I came because it's just what we do on Sundays. Deliverance for that attitude is in the room right now. Critical assistance. Y'all going to make me get down off the platform and come down them rails right there. Say, I don't have no need. If there's somebody in the room that says that right now, you need to be beating it to the altar. Because the devil has done got your ears plugged and got a blindfold on you and he's got a hook in your nose and he's leading you around like somebody's little putts. Oh, I don't need nothing. There's a book of the Bible. When they, uh, 
John the Revelator spoken to by the angel. And he said, the church at Laodicea, you say, I'm rich, increased with goods, and don't need anything. He said, the truth is, you're blind, you're poor, you're wretched, and you are naked. Man, I didn't want to go here. I wanted to stay with the shouting. You got to hear me right now. I come to shake somebody out of your hell-induced stupor. Say, I got a little bit more time. I, I got a little bit more time. You know what? The book says, if you would have known what time the thief was coming, you'd have been waiting on him. And he said, the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. There ain't nobody in here dumb enough to leave your doors unlocked when you know a, a prowler's in the neighborhood. Jesus is getting ready to sound the trumpet. And he's coming after a bride who has made herself ready. And if there's something in my life that's got me wondering if I'm ready or not, can I introduce to you a critical assistance that meets an urgent need? There ain't nothing in this world more important than you and I making heaven. There's nothing in this world worth losing your soul over. All right. This word is for a lady, specifically for a lady, younger lady, who ain't been long out of the world. It fits everybody, but it's for you. Exodus, the 14th chapter. The children of Israel have just experienced Pentecost. The, the delivering power of God in a way they've never seen it before. Their exodus has established things that will be a part of their culture and their lives forever. They've seen an aspect of God's mercy and God's judgment that no other generation has ever seen. Egypt is a type of the world and it gave them sustenance and life, but then it turned on them and began to take their livelihood, made slaves out of them and killed and imprisoned their children. But they cried out to God and he sent Moses to lead them out. And when he led them out, it was with a supernatural witness of signs and wonders. In one night, Brother David, between three and five million men, women, children, and all their livestock and all their earthly goods and all the stuff that Egypt gave them to leave escaped the tyranny and the oppression of Egypt or the world in one night. But now, in accord with their pessimistic nature, what seemed too good to be true probably is because here they stand, fresh out of Egypt. The Red Sea before them, don't put that scripture up there yet. The Red Sea before them, because they're reading that instead of listening to me. The Red Sea before them, and they looked over their shoulder, and there's Egypt a defeated foe that won't stay defeated. Maybe I told them it's gonna be a day they were never gonna forget. It's about to happen. They turn around and it's the Red Sea before them. And they look over their shoulder and there's that enemy that won't stay defeated. The armies of Egypt, Pharaoh's heart has now been hardened and they're in hot pursuit of the children of Israel. They've just been delivered. They thought they were free, but now a defeated enemy has raised his head up and they are afraid. They begin to question God and God's man. Please hang with me right now. Don't be playing with the babies and stuff. Stay with me right now. You can't afford. This is a critical time. 
It's critical time. Them babies ain't bothering nobody but you. They begin to question God and God's man, Moses. They even made the statement, this is heavy, Brother Larry, I feel it. We were better off in Egypt. Moses, it looks like you brought us to the wilderness to die. Look, they had a word from God. They had a destiny. And it was the will of God that they fulfill it without Egypt looking over their shoulder. They are standing on the brink of their greatest miracle. And all they can do is talk about the obstacles in their path and the enemy that's behind them. They are new worshipers. Fresh out of the mire and the muck of hell's oppression. They have lived in fear. And God is about to make a statement designed to eradicate that fear. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 through 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Wait a minute. Oh, Brother Jesse, the Holy Ghost came into this room to tell somebody, you don't see change yet. But the Word says, don't be afraid. Why is that such a big deal? Let me tell you something. If every time you wanted something, you saw it like that, you'd be a spoilt, rotten brat in the kingdom of God and your faith would never grow. Because the only way your faith grows is when it stretches. They had water all around them. And Pharaoh was on their track. And the man of God said, well, we hate these preachers sometimes. Fear ye not. Here we go. Stand still. Mm -hmm. Stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Look at here. Which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you've seen today you shall see them again no more forever. Now you know who I'm talking to right now, that every morning you've been waking up, your mind's been assaulted with that enemy that's behind you. And your mind has been assaulted with what looks like an unpassable obstacle in front of you. And I thought I was free. I thought I wasn't going to have no problems anymore. I, let me tell you something. You're going to still have problems, but it ain't going to be that one. Yeah. And that sea that you see in front of you, it don't represent nothing but your next miracle. Verse 14. Anybody feel the Lord ministering to you right now? Right now. I won't wait till my troubles are over. I'm going to dance till my victory comes. I'm going to claim my victory in Jesus. That's what needs to happen right now. You say, well, I want to get to the next part. Let me tell you what, the next part won't work until you start acting by faith. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. But I got to do something. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you won't. Verse 15, I'm going to cause you some trouble right now. I'm going to hurt your feelings right now. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Why criest thou unto me? Now you're wondering, now what's that got to do with anything? Because the word says I got to boldly come into his presence to find grace and obtain mercy to help in the time of need. I got a need. But you know what the Lord's telling Moses, Brother David? Wait just a minute. You're crying out for me to meet a need that I already told you wasn't going to be a problem. Well, if you've got a word from the Lord, you need to stand up on it with your shoulders back and stop going to the Lord for it. Well, you got to hear me right now. You're praying for something that God's already given you the word about. Why don't you rejoice and dance a little bit in the Holy Ghost because you've got a word from God. Look at here. Pharaoh's still behind them. The Red Sea is still before them. And the Lord said, let's get something straight right now. You're praying for a prayer that's already been answered. Because when I brought you out of Egypt, I didn't bring you out by yourself. You came with a word. Matter of fact, that word was given to Abraham when he said, your people are going to be afflicted and in servitude for 400 years. But then I'm bringing them out. You're praying for something that has scared you that God has already told you is going to come to pass. And then he told the children of Israel, you talk about faith right now. Speak unto the children of Israel. Please be seated for a moment. I ain't no ways near about done. I'm having too much fun right now. Speak unto the children of Israel. Don't sympathize with them. Don't pat them. Don't tell them everything's going to be all right. Tell them to go forward. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, Scott, ever, let me just sing you a little bit. I started, let me sing. You can ask the children of Israel. They were trapped by the Red Sea. All about that mean old Pharaoh and his army. They had water all around them, and Pharaoh was on their track. But out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. You know why? Because he's an old time God. And he came today to tell somebody, you've already got the word, go forward. Can I tell you, don't believe the devil's lie that you were better off in the world. Why are you praying this prayer? This prayer's already been answered. This need has already been met. Go forward. Say there's water there. There's enemy there. That's the beautiful thing about living for God. If he says go, go. Stop worrying about stuff you can't control anyway. God said my will hasn't changed. Your destiny hasn't changed. I didn't make you for Egypt, and I didn't make you to come out of Egypt. I made you to go to the promised land. Move forward. We can't go forward. The sea's in front of us. He said, don't worry about the sea. I'm paraphrasing. You keep moving forward. The promised land is on the other side of this next miracle. Moses, lift up your rod. Stretch it out over the sea. And when he did, the wind started blowing. And the sea waters rolled back. And the children of Israel walked upon dry ground. There are some things we don't have to seek God for. And whether you're lost or saved is one of them. You don't have to seek God if it's his, his will for you to be saved or not. The word already tells you it is. 
Isaiah chapter 30, verse number 21 says, And you shall hear a word behind you. And you shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. I said, It's a word behind you. Brother David, what would be happening in this place if about 25 people that already had the word acted like it? Say, what's wrong with you? I'm practicing for when I win. I'm practicing for when I climb this mountain. Say, you ain't, you, you don't, there, everywhere you look, there's an enemy. I know, but I got a word from God. And it's bigger than my enemies. And it's bigger than my obstacles. Walk in the way. Second Chronicles 19. Now, we went from some new, fresh out of Egypt worshipers to some children of Israel who are an established nation. They've been living in the promised land for many years. Matter of fact, they've already seen some success. Saul, failure Saul. Success, David, failure David. Solomon's messed up. The kingdom's been divided. But they've been in the promised land for many years. They've had kings and priests and they've won many battles. They're presently functioning as two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. The king of Judah is named Jehoshaphat. He's a godly leader and there's peace in the land and everything seems to be going all right. But in chapter number 20, Jehoshaphat gets word that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon have brought their armies together. They recruited some more nations with them and there's a whole parcel of them that's come together for the express purpose of invading Judah. It's a great army and they're already on their way when Jehoshaphat gets word. There's more of them than there are us. They're mighty and we're, we've been having peace and we've been doing what we do and Jehoshaphat is afraid. Verse four, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And they prayed and they fasted and they travailed before the throne of grace because they had a need. A powerful enemy was coming against them and they brought their petition to the only place where they got an answer. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord. Jehaziel's a man in the congregation among the prayers and the fasters. It wasn't upon Jehoshaphat that the word came from the Lord. It was upon Jehaziel. Now surprise, surprise, surprise. If you know what the name Jehaziel means, you see this is what he was born for. The name Jehaziel means God sees. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Jehaziel's not looking through the eyes of the flesh that are afraid. He's got the connection with the one that knows the end from the beginning. And he said, listen to me, all of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Look at here. Somebody get this word. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. There's about 10 people that I've been calling your name out in prayer for two days. Why? 
You came today with a need, a critical need. Now Moses told the children of Israel, stand still and see the power of the Lord today. Everybody say today. today. But Jehaziel under the influence of the Spirit of God says, the battle's not yours, but God's. Next verse. Tomorrow, Ladies and gentlemen, if you receive this as a word from God, I'm done preaching. Because what does tomorrow mean? Today ain't going to get me. If the Lord gave me a word for tomorrow, it means I'm going to make it through today. If the Lord gave me a word for tomorrow, it means that today's trials ain't going to be my last. He said tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff Ziz, and you'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Does that sound familiar? Huh? He's the same God. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly. Now what does that mean to you? What exactly does that mean to you, to come boldly? I ain't got to prove nothing to God. But I'm about to come, Brother Jerry, with a need that won't be forgotten. Say, so, well, what happens when the Lord meets that need? We're not trying to remind the Lord of what he can do and what he will do, I'm giving birth to a testimony. We'll say, well, what is that? I'm going to stand up Wednesday night and I'm going to say, can I tell you what Jesus did That's right. Sunday? That's right. I was getting a little nervous because I ain't been out of Egypt very long and the enemy was behind my shoulder and the sea was in front of me. But the man of God gave me a word and all he did was tell me a reminder of a word I've already got. It wasn't nothing new I needed. It was just to roll back the curtain of memories and remind me of what he already told me. And if he told it to me, Take him to the bank because he don't lie. Or somebody walking through the bliss of everything going good and out of nowhere you get a bad report and you get scared. But the people started praying and there came a revelation and the revelation came from the vision of God. And he says, I know you're tough, and I know you're skilled, and I know you're blah, 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 bad, but you can't walk in my arena. He said, you ain't needing to fight this battle because this one's above your head. You ain't we needing to fight this battle because this is between me and hell. This is between me and the enemy. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You understand that it's the same thing that works. Some of us, we get a little bit of a, of a, of a prideful attitude about us when you hung around a while. But the Bible is telling me the same thing delivered the new worshipers as delivered the old worshipers. 
But it all begins and ends, Brother Larry, with a word from God. Let us therefore come boldly. Boy, I, wanna, I just want to wrap this up and let us come pray, but I got a minister right now. There's some ladies in here. You've been fighting hell almost like the devil has been sitting at your supper table and it ain't your husband either. When you wake up in the morning, you are assaulted. When you go to bed at night, you are assaulted and it ain't nothing but a trick of the enemy. How bad do you need him? Say, well, Brother Terrence, I want to preach like I know. But the truth is, nobody knows how bad you need him but him. And Jesus has the table spread. I want to ask you this morning, Brother Terrence or, or Sister Rita or Sister Rochelle or Sister Margaret, exactly what's left to do? Are we waiting on one of those kapow uh, explosions out of heaven? Or has something already been spoken to our faith and said, you know what, I've been hearing the devil tell me for like three and a half weeks now, you was, your life was a whole lot better off when you didn't go to church. But you know something, Brother Brando? The Holy Ghost sent me here today to say that's a lie. That's, right. that's a lie. Today's a new day. What should be happening to our faith right now? You know, I guess it all boils down to has my need brought me to the place where I go to the throne and he has to notice I'm there? Say, oh, God knows everything. I'm just telling you, Brother John, what the book says. Coming boldly means I'm coming with an urgency I ain't never come with before. So the first thing you have to do is you have to come. So well, I, I kind of like to just get it in my own little world and everything. That's the trouble is you've been living in your own little world. How bad do you really need deliverance? Say, so, well, what if I don't get it today? I never said you was going to get it today. When they got the word, the water was still in front and the enemy was still in back. Brother Jerry, he told him to go forward before the miracle. I wish I could remember. I've called your names out. I walked this, I walked this sanctuary this morning and I called your names out. I know you're here. Some of you have just tied a knot at the end of the rope. You have to understand, we have to understand that Jesus wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true. You have not because you ask not. It's a real issue. We got to come boldly, not because we think we're special, but because Jesus thinks we're special. Oh, I could preach a whole other message. John chapter number four, the Bible said, and Jesus must needs go through Samaria. Why do you need to go through Samaria, Sister Maria? Because there was a little gal coming to the well that had a need. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right now. Don't come out of obligation. Don't come going through the motions. Come with the intention of making your mark, of building a memorial, the creation of a testimony. This approach... I'm scared, Brother Larry. I'm really scared. But Brother David, the Holy Ghost told me this morning, 
stop preparing for their response. The book says the word will go out and accomplish that which it was intended and will not return void. This approach, stand with me. This approach, this petition, this memorial will be my legacy. That's the attitude you got to come with. Now, I could have quit about 30 or 40 minutes ago when everybody was hooping and hollering and yelling and shouting and stuff, and I got a few people in the altar, but we would have went out of here and had the same trouble. But somebody's got to make up in their mind. This has been killing me, and I've been holding it in, and I've been scratching, and I've been clawing, and I held on. And can I tell you what you held on for? Today. You held on today because there's about to be a shot into your faith. Because that's all it takes. My wife is going to sing. I've already invited you to come. We're not into game playing. This is the real deal. These altars are open. The word has gone forth. Now, I, there's one. There's one. There's, there's another one. There's another one. There comes one. I'm talking about those I done prayed for. There's a few more. There's a few more of you out there. I done called your name out in prayer today because you've got a need and you've dressed it up and you've made it pretty and you squirted perfume on it and, and you've made it where people can tolerate it but it ain't been healed yet. Sing. You ask me how it is that I'm still standing
Hallelujah. Can we thank the Lord for his ministry today, for his word? It happens because of faith. We have two baptisms to do real quickly, but not so quickly that we lose the significance of the moment. Amen. Amen. This is powerful. It's essential. Salvation depends upon baptism in Jesus' name. Right. It's very, very important. And uh, we're happy that David Palmer, my new friend, and uh, he's from Wardell too, Nanny. We got a whole slew of folks coming from that direction, amen? amen. And uh, uh, we got about 15 or 16, maybe 17 communities that drive here every service amen. for our church. And uh, we're, that is an unbelievable honor. So, uh, and, uh, so David is going to make his way over here to be changed, and Corey is also asked to be baptized in Jesus' name, and uh, Corey Peppercorn, and uh, that's a wonderful thing, amen. There's no other name, no other name, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit. Y'all be careful going with her. If you ain't been in the water yet, you might find yourself. Yeah. Slow down, wait, and watch. Revival is happening. It's not coming, it's happening. There are some people coming out of their shell. God's using them. But there's some people that saw the enemy drown today. And in a manner of speaking, that's what baptism does. Baptism is a type of the Red Sea. It is. The, the cloud and the fire are the spirit. The Red Sea is the water. They came out of Egypt under a cloud, under fire, through the water. Amen. We're excited about this, aren't we? Amen. We're going to get them baptized. In Jesus' name. Make sure if you come, if you want to come closer, we want to certainly make sure that their family members can see clearly. Don't come just yet. And we want to make sure that, uh, that everybody else can because we this is a celebration. Amen. We want everybody to be a part of it. Come on, sing. blood of the Lamb. I need a cleansing from the fountain. My soul is hungry. I've got this
As I said earlier, this is David Palmer. He's uh, been coming to service for a few weeks now, been coming to recovery class, and, and God's done some great things in his life. And the best is yet to come, amen? amen. We're going to celebrate every step on the ladder, aren't we? Amen. amen. So well, I want you to pray with me over David and his family. This is Melissa, your cousins, right? Yeah, she, she's from Wardell area too. We get like five more people from Wardell. There won't be nobody left down there. <laughs> Amen. Brother Richard's got family down there. Sister Kim's got family down there. Why not? <laughs> uh, why not? So pray with me right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friend David. It's a big step of faith for him, and, and it was in his heart. He asked for it. He searched for it. You placed it upon him. I believe, God, the power of the Holy Ghost will speak through him. I believe he could come up out of this water filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues under the influence of the Holy Ghost. I pray you'll bless him and Melissa and all their family. Little Maddie, I pray you'll bless them all, God. I believe the power of the Holy Ghost is going to be a witness in their family and in their home. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. David Palmer, upon the confession of your faith, the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. This is Corey Peppercorn. She's my friend, our friend, and the Holy Ghost is on her life. She's already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and has an incredible experience with God, but she'd never been baptized in Jesus' name. And uh, the Lord started working on her too. She asked to meet with me this week, and I really hadn't been going to nobody about getting baptized. <laughs> Amen. That, that's how the Lord works, you know. He wants... He wants his will to be done and he wants everybody to carry that name because that's that's where the power is and it's not just in the name of Jesus but it's in Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died that we might be saved we're going to pray for Corey and her family we've met Jack and Miles and Luke and and uh, they are blessed with a great mom and the future is going to be better when you come through the Red Sea they're just one more miracle to the promised land amen, amen. And um, Wednesday night, the Lord did a powerful work in her life and ministered to her very powerfully, very clearly. It was a miracle. Wouldn't you agree, Corey? It was a miracle. Something, I said something crazy while I was preaching, just like one of those things that comes from nowhere. And she turned to her mama and held her paper up and said, Do you hear what he's saying? Because it was like all... Oh, I might as well have said, Corey, listen to what I'm saying. And then Sister Meredith had a dream about her, and she just confirmed exactly what the word was. So the hand of the Lord is on this young lady's life. Amen? Amen. There's no doubt about that. And this is an essential step 
in her going to where God wants her to be. So we're going to pray for Corey and her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, I pray all authority and power in heaven and earth is in her, it's in you, in this name, and everything that's about to take place here is a spiritual occurrence. It's supernatural. You said to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins. There's some things going to be washed away in the Red Sea. Just as you drowned the Egyptians, there's some things coming out of the back. They're going away. They're going to be drowned here, and that's her wish and her desire, but now it's coupled with faith in the power of the name of Jesus and there's nothing like it in all the world I declare it in Jesus name Amen Amen Corey Peppercorn upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins as you've already received the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name He's good. He's good. Who's next up? Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house tonight for this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Gio was ministering. I couldn't help but uh, remember a post that my wife had shared years ago, and I had saved it. It says this, if you quit now, you'll end up right back where you were when you first began. And when you first began, you were desperate to be where you are right now. That's powerful. I remember Brother David riding in my car, snotting and crying, wanting to be different, ashamed, prideful, scared. And so when the devil tries to tell me that it was a lot better back then, I said, hold on, time out. I remember. And I tell the Lord that a lot. I remember, Lord, where you brought me from. That's something I never want to forget, Brother Brandon, where the Lord brought me from. Because if it wasn't for his mercy, Brother Shannon, if it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't be here right now. But it's only by the mercy and the grace of God that we're all here, right? So one time, let's together lift our voices and magnify him. Give him a hand clap of praise and thank him for the opportunity to be in the house this morning to magnify him freely and to bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and we magnify you. You are worthy of our praise. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I'm thankful for the word that I heard this morning. I'm thankful for his spirit that is still in this place. And I know that I serve a living and a mighty God. Amen. We have a few bulletins this morning, or a few announcements rather. Tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. is men's prayer meeting. So all of you men that can, please make it a point to be here for men's prayer meeting tomorrow night. Church cleaning schedule this week is team number two. That would be Brother Terrence and Sister Dana. Vacation Bible school is scheduled for July the 19th through the 22nd, ages 4 through 11. There is registration forms for your child to come to Vacation Bible School in the back. And if you haven't signed them up already, please do that because they have to be registered to be a part of it. So if you know anybody that wants to be here, ages 4 to 11, please make sure that you sign them up so they will be registered. There will be a short meeting after church Wednesday night 
to discuss final vacation Bible school plans. There will be no regular church service on Wednesday night, July the 21st, due to vacation Bible school. Riverbend Kids' first annual summer blast is July the 17th. There's going to be a bouncy house and a fun day, things like that. We need volunteers to help with all the activities. If you are interested in this, please talk to Sister Casey or Sister Kim ASAP. We thank you for that. The youth trip to Pigeon Forge, or the Elevation Conference as it's known at, is July the 28th through the 30th. So all of you that are going, please be sure to make sure you're planned and ready to go to that. If you would like to sign up to receive church text or any bulletins from the church, please contact Sister Amanda, and she can hook you right on up with that. I know that is a benefit, especially when my family were going through some pretty tough times and Dad going through what he went through. It was a blessing to know, Brother Billy, that when I sent that message out, I knew that somebody was praying for him, and that's a good thing. You, can, you don't have to walk in fear knowing that, that something is happening, that somebody's not on their knees seeking the face of God for your family members. Amen. That's a blessing, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Do we have anybody that has any birthdays or anniversaries in the house this morning? Ah, I see a birthday. All right. Billy, you've got a birthday too, don't you? All right. All right, we're going to have all of our birthdays remain standing, and we're going to sing happy birthday to you this morning. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever had. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Brindley got her a new birthday at youth camp, too. She was filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. That's a great thing. Amen. We are so thankful for that. Brother David, if you would, sir, would you please dismiss us in the name of Jesus? Amen. God bless you. We love you.